Good afternoon, people watching Miss 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins, past, present, and future, was buried and rose again on the third day, according to scripture. We're saved by grace through faith in Christ alone, not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him, will not perish, but have eternal life. That's the gospel. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of Christ. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ Jesus, the moment you accept Christ as Savior, not only are you saved, but you're justified. By the blood of Jesus, you're rapture ready and sealed until the day of redemption, which means you cannot and will not lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you, the Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. And the Holy Spirit will change you. Now, Barry did a short video. Barry Scarborough did a short I'm going to link his video in the description box. He did a short video, I think it was yesterday, about the layoffs that are coming. I'm going to give you this article from Hal Turner because basically... Everything he said in that video was spot on. So this is what's going on. The U.S. logistics manager, it says economic catastrophe unfolding. U.S. manufacturing orders from China is down 40%. That is a lot. I mean a whole lot. It says U.S. logistic managers are bracing for delays in delivery of goods from China in early January as a result of canceled sailings of container ships and rollovers of exports by ocean carriers. Carriers have been executing on an active capacity management strategy by announcing more blank, blank sailings and suspending services to balance supply with demand. The unrelenting decline in container freight rates from Asia caused by a collapse in demand is compelling is compelling ocean carriers to blank more sailings than ever before as vessel utilization hit lows Joe Monahan CEO of Worldwide Logistics Group says This is going to be really bad coming up in the coming January. It says U.S. manufacturing orders in China are down 40%. According to the latest CNBC supply chain uh, heat map uh, data, as a result of the decrease in orders, worldwide logistics tell CNBC it is expecting Chinese factories to shut down two weeks earlier than usual for the Chinese Lunar New Year. Chinese New Year Eve falls on January 21st next year, 2023. The seven, uh, that seven days after the holiday are considered a national holiday. Many of the manufacturers will be closed in early January for the holiday, which is much, much earlier than last year, he said. The supply chain research firm Project 44 tells CNBC that after reaching record-breaking levels of trade during the pandemic lockdowns, vessel TEU, 20-foot equivalent unit, volume from China to the U.S. has significantly pulled back since the end of this past summer including a decline in 20 21% in total vessel container volumes between August and November. Asia-based global shipping from HLS warned clients in a recent communication about the ocean transport business climate. It seems to be a very bad time for the shipping industry. We have the combination of declining demands and overcapacity as new tonnage enters the market. 
HLS, uh, HLS analysts are predicting a further 2.5% decline in container volumes and nearly 5 uh, five to six percent increase in capacity in 2023, which will continue to negatively impact freight rates in 2023. Remember, a few months ago, probably a couple of months ago, Walmart, Target. I think it was Target, but I know it was Walmart. They canceled. I, knew, I think it was Amazon. They canceled a lot of orders going forth. Think about all that and think about this. The container shipping market will be further complicated by economic uncertainty, geopolitical concerns, and also the increasingly heated market competition. OL USA CEO Alan Barr tells CNBC that there are some early signs of inventory correction. Overall business volume and order flow out of Asia continue to be muted as carriers cancel more vessels and there is little upside momentum leading into Chinese New Year, he said. Space is already tightened, so while demand is soft, space may be uh, at a premium in January throughout uh, Q1. On the plus side, inventory depletion and the need to restart the order and delivery cycle appears to be inching a little upward. HLS cited uh, trade data showing the U.S. imports from Asia plunged in October to the lowest to their lowest level in 20 months. The spot rate for a container from Asia to the U.S. West Coast has crossed the break-even point with little room for further reductions, it wrote. Um, the large West Coast ports like Los Angeles and Long Beach have experienced the largest drop in trade, according to uh, Josh Brazil, vice president of supply chain now. Looking at this and coming from a spiritual perspective, this right here is the beginning of a financial downfall right here. This is going to affect millions of people. This is not going to affect hundreds or thousands. This is going to affect millions of people worldwide, at least nationwide. The recent rise in COVID lockdowns in China continues to impact manufacturing operations and delay cargo outputs. There are also local access obstacles for cross-province and cross-city transportation, mostly related to truck driver testing requirements with trucking capacity to be largely affected. The fight for vessel space, the rollovers of cargo, and the slow shipping uh, the slow trucking is tracked by CNBC supply chain heat map. So this goes on to say, um, why is this happening? If you find yourself wondering how this is even possible that demand for goods from China has dropped 40%, the reasons are starting, are staring you right there in the face. It's simple. Russia sanctions imposed by the illegitimate, hmm, creepy, dopey, sleepy, whatever, administration. It worked like this. Back in 2014, let's go back. 2014. The U.S. and Europe overthrew the uh, democratically elected president of Ukraine, Viktor Yanukovych. Yeah, Yanukovych, that's his name. Yanukovych. Yanukovych. He was the president of Ukraine back in 2014. Hmm. Who was president here in 2014? Oh, yeah, 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 him. Yeah. They did this because the U.S. and Europe 
wanted Ukraine to leave Russia's sphere of influence and come into the U.S.-Europe sphere of influence so they could get Ukraine to join NATO and put U.S. missile defenses on Ukrainian soil. On Ukrainian soil. Russia told the U.S. and Europe that this was a red line and that having U.S. missiles on Ukrainian soil would give those missiles about five-minute flight time to Moscow and a five to 10 minute flight time to Russia's strategic nuclear missile silos. Russia made clear that no nation on earth can defend, its, uh, can defend against missiles with a five minute flight time. And that Russia simply could not and would not allow that threat to be developed. It was an existential threat to Russia because there was no way for Russia to know if those missiles were conventional or nuclear. Russia simply could not sit back and do nothing and allow this to happen knowing that knowing the missiles could end up being nuclear which could decapitate Russia and wipe out the nation. Yuna, uh, Yunakovich, I think that's his name, spoke with the people in government, in business, and in the regular population and asked them if Ukraine should move from Russia's sphere of influence to the West. They all said no. When the time came for y y Yanukovych, Yanukovych, that's his name, to give an answer to the U.S. and Europe about moving Ukraine into the Western sphere of influence, he told the U.S. and the European Union, thanks but no thanks. Ukraine's future, he told them, remained aligned with Russia. Well, <laughs> That was an answer that the U.S. and the European Union just wasn't willing to accept. They were not going to accept that. They wouldn't take no for an answer. So, what happens next? The U.S. and Europe moved, gain, moved to gain control of Ukraine. The U.S. and the European Union for a minute incited and financed protests, demonstrations, and riots inside Ukraine to destabilize the Ukrainian government. The violence escalated fast as the U.S. Embassy in Kiev paid out upwards of a million dollars in cash, a million dollars a day in cash to the protesters. Over the course of a few months, the violence got so ferocious that in 2014, Ukraine's President Viktor Yanukovych fled the country and Ukraine's government, you guessed it, collapsed. When that happened, guess who was right there to finance and support a new puppet government favorable to the West? the U.S. and Europe. Once a new puppet government was elected, the U.S. European Union told this new puppet government in Ukraine to begin attacking and purging Russian-speaking people in the eastern part of that country. They did this because it was a geographic region that elected Yayunkovich, and it was a region that said, no to moving to the U.S. European Union sphere of influence. And that region spoke softly but carried a big stick. That region is where about 90% of Ukraine's gross domestic product comes from. So when those people speak government, 
when those people speak, government has to listen because that's where the money comes from. Knowing this, the eastern regions of Ukraine would be more most problematic. The U.S. and the European Union told their puppets in Kiev to mass troops along the border of Luhansk and Donetsk. And they did. Those troops began artillery shelling and mortar bombing civilians in those two states, which they call Oblast. They wanted to break the Russian-speaking population there and drive it out. And there was another component for Russia in this new situation, Crimea. For 300 years, Crimea was actually part of Russia. That changed about 50 years ago when the Soviet Union leader Khrushchev gave crime to Ukraine, yet he just gave it. And overnight, Crimea changed from being Russia to being Ukraine. No one there liked it, but in the, but in the then Soviet Union, one didn't dare complain. So, I'm going to link this in the description box. This is interesting. This is all part of this administration. All of it. This goes on to say days later. In January 2022, Sleepy was sworn in. All the troubles of Ukraine began all over again. So Russia reissued the proposed treaty, having it brought by diplomatic couriers to the presidents of the U.S., all of European Union, and NATO countries. But this time, the proposal made clear. If Russia cannot obtain, listen, if Russia cannot obtain ironclad, legally enforceable security guarantees by diplomatic means, it will secure them by military or military technical means. The U.S. and the West took about three weeks before they rejected it again. About a month later, having exhausted all diplomatic efforts and finding itself, itself facing a hostile and aggressive West, Russia sent troops into Ukraine. The rest is history. And this history is still going. Because right now, as we speak right now, Russia had just has just upped the ante on its uh, nuclear uh, talk and rhetoric. I just got something in, and it is yeah. I'm going to need to find that article because right now they are talking. He's talking more about. Um, raising his nuclear rhetoric he's talking about it again so we'll see what happens but the price of gas is going to get extremely high next year in a few which is in a few weeks things are going to be economic economically they're going to change. It goes on to say here, there isn't enough money left in the U.S. economy. People aren't buying stuff because they don't have the money. And they don't have the money because the U.S. imposed economic sanctions on Russian gas and oil, which forced everyone who does, who does business with us to do the same, which drove up the fuel costs, which then drove up the costs of everything else. 
So this is a big mess and it's going to continue. So everything that Barry was saying in that video he did yesterday, I believe he did it yesterday, was spot on. I'm going to link his video in the description box along with this one right here. Um, in my view and what I'm feeling, the church is not destined for this. How long before the rapture? I don't think it's, I really don't feel as long at all. I feel that we're going to be out of here in the blink of an eye sooner than we think. Before we know it. You're going to be going about doing your business and all of a sudden you're gone. And that's how it's going to happen. Knowing me, I'll be at the store or either at Ulta or somewhere and I'm gone. Or driving and I'm gone. Can you imagine how many accidents is going to be on the street from people who are raptured? Oh my gosh. That's going to be bad. Not to mention the planes in the air if the pilots were safe. That's, that's going to be bad. I'm going to link this in the description box and I will be back later. Thank you.